Hello, Biracial Tiffany here. Hope everybody had a good Memorial Day weekend. And uh, glad to be back and not so uh, riled up as I was last time. Um, but I think I'm happy with uh, what came out of that for me. It uh, sort of made it clear to me uh, why I'm doing this maybe or... I don't know. Anyway, so I'm feeling good about things. Um, I did, I just wanted to clear up a couple more things, but it's not coming from a place of anger. I just, um, it kind of surprises me that people say that I seem, some people, and very few, and so these people, thank you for your comments, and of course all the nice comments are really greatly appreciated a little bit more because I'm a person and I'd rather hear nice things about myself, but anyway, um, I just don't really understand how someone could think that I hate black people or that I'm racist. So, you know, I don't watch these videos because I'm not a big fan of hearing myself talk or really looking at myself actually. Um, doing this has helped me with that. Uh, I can like stand the sight of myself or a picture or something and the sound of my voice doesn't bother me quite as much as it did before. Um, so I don't know what I could have said to give this impression. Um, but I love black people actually and I wanted to buy that shirt that says I heart black people but I wasn't sure that, I don't know, my intention would be taken the wrong way or something so I never got it which is kind of sad but um, yeah, I love black people. I love black women. Uh, I just... Uh, it is a great tragedy to me, actually. Like a personal thing with me that I don't have closer relationships with black women. And that's part of the reason I think that I'm doing this. Uh, and I don't really know how to elaborate on that other than to say... Um, perhaps for future generations. It, it may be, it may help someone who's raising a biracial child to hear me talk about this and say, oh, maybe it doesn't behoove anyone for me to, um, you know, place in someone's innocent and clear mind that these kind of people are going to have this issue with you without, you know, letting experiences in your life teach you, you know, whether those things are going to be true or not. Um, but yeah, I, I'm black and I love black people, so I just wanted to say that. And, um, I would greatly appreciate people sort of just keeping their comments and their judgments. I mean, I guess I am saying if they're mean, like, restrict them to talking about me because I'm the one who decided to do this. My mom did not decide to make YouTube videos. My dad did not decide to make YouTube videos. And I think it's unfair for them to watch this and sort of and read comments and be judged because I know that they did the best they could in any given moment because they love me very much. So, um, yeah, I would just appreciate cutting them some slack, I guess. And I also feel like my mom's getting, like, all this, oh, that's so sad, and could she, and that's terrible. And I'm talking, like, three or four people, but I know she reads it, and... Anyway. Um, and, I, and I've been thinking, well, you know, why is that? I don't feel like I have many stories to offer up of my dad talking to me about race, and I guess I think that must be because maybe in an interracial relationship when you have kids the white parent may defer to the black parent for to like you know how do we deal with race in this situation because as a white person you don't really know what a person of color experiences or may need to know or maybe need to be prepared for so I guess you would just sort of follow the lead of the black parent and my parents divorced they separated when I was five anyway. And so, you know, maybe that's why I'm so confused, <laughs> as so many people seem to say. And I try not to take that personally. Because um, I guess it is a confusing situation. So, um, 
Anyway, you know, my parents divorced, so I think my life then became separated even more into black and white because it was, you know, my dad or my mom. <laughs> it wasn't my dad and my mom anymore. Um, so what am I saying here? Yeah, I think my the white parent probably defers to the black parent for, like, racial issues with their child. Um, but I, I also had pulled out some pictures because I thought maybe if I gave faces to these people or the situation, you know, I wouldn't have so much of that um, negativity toward my mother especially coming up. So, um, I always have problems when I try to show people things on here, but I'm trying to learn to just keep it up a little higher than I have to. So here is a picture from when I was very little, my mom and my dad and me. Okay. And here is a more recent picture of my mom and I. And, oh, I thought I had one out, but not in a frame because there's a glare. But here's a picture of my dad and I at my sister Shannon's wedding. This is a picture of my ma, uh, my dad and me and my stepmom Jane. And apparently I had a time where I really liked wearing this black hat. And this is me and Shannon and Megan, my sisters slash stepsisters. And this is my grandparents, my white grandparents. My black grandparents, unfortunately, are no longer with us. But I know it's so ghetto that it's a photocopy, like a Xerox of a picture of my mom's mom. Um, yeah, so that's some of my family. They're lovely, wonderful people, and they all care about me, the black ones and the white ones. Um, and I will offer up one last story before I go today. Um, I was thinking, you know, just again about how I keep having all these stories about my mom and my mom and my mom and how it pertains to race and me and my racial identity. And so I was trying to think, like, what could I, like, what story do I have to say about my dad? And the one I can come up with is that when I was in maybe second or third grade, um, and my parents were no longer together, and when I would have my weekends with my dad, I was at my grandparents a lot. And I don't know if at this time, I, I don't know. Anyway, the story takes place at my grandparents' house in Warren, Michigan, which is still a very white area. Um, it was in the summer, and I, like, I started, I made friends with this girl down the street whose name was Liz, and she was a few years older than me, and I thought she was really cool, and I was, like, so excited mm -hmm. that this girl wanted to be my friend, and um, she came over on occasion, and I went to her house. So this couldn't, I'm telling the story kind of out of order because it couldn't have all happened in one weekend. But the point is we had been friends for a while and playing at each other's houses, meaning my grandparents' house and her house down the street. And then like she just kind of stopped hanging out with me or even talking to me. And there were other kids in the neighborhood and we were at one of their houses one day and it was really like she just was not talking to me anymore. And so I said, well, is something wrong? Or I'm sure I thought I did something wrong. And she was like, actually, my dad said I can't play with you anymore because you're black. And not only did that, like, really, really suck, because obviously it would, but she, you know, like, we were in a group of people and she said this, so I was, like, doubly humiliated. And, I mean, really devastated, like, devastated about this. And I remember that, I guess, you know, my dad came home and my grandma told him what happened. And he was so mad. I just remember he was so mad. And I think he, like, wanted to go talk to this guy, or more than talk to this guy. I don't know. 
and that kind of scared me and I was like oh why does it have to be so hard and I'm just as white as I am black so why can't you play with me sometimes or something I don't know so that's just a, a story like that I feel like I have of my dad and I and race coming up because it just doesn't really um, so that's all. I am about to be overtime, so I'm gonna stop right now. Thank you for watching.